All right, hello everybody, it's me, Clonk, and we are playing Over the Moon Demo, a Yandere-themed uh, visual novel about two gay boys. Warning, this game involves Yandere themes and behaviors, which is not condoned in real life. Please do not proceed if this, is may, if this may cause you discomfort. Oh, we're... <laughs> I'm gonna continue. You may have noticed. I, I really like that uh, intro to the title screen. The uh, It looks really pretty. I'm not gonna lie. And it's got an astrology theme, by the way. Please gaze upon me for eternity, my dear astrologist. You find yourself standing in the middle of a spiral staircase. Galileo. What is this place? You look up. There are dazzling lights above, coupled with the echo of jovial laughter. You peer down. As the stairs descend into the black abyss, you are hit with a wave of melancholy. Continue walking up the stairs or see what is down below. <laughs> it's I love I love this so much. This is you're on my mind, Galileo. Dude, I love the they've put a lot of work even into the into the UI and stuff. It's really awesome. Okay, um let's let's proceed. No, nah, don't go down, go up. You continue up the stairs into the breathtaking light as the lively chatter and laughter get louder. As you climb higher, a figure in the distance sharpens into clarity. The distant figure of a girl who looks lovingly at a distant star. Her lips move, and her eyes crinkle joyfully. She laughs, and the sky shimmers all around as if laughing with her. My sanctuary. My universe. Through... I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this word. Through epochs. Epics? I have been waiting you, my adored one. Your movement ceases. You freeze in place, watching the two lovers in awe. It's best not to intrude this special moment. The girl moves her lips again, a hand slowly reaching out towards her beloved star. Yo, Anoxius, thanks for the gifted sub. Appreciate that. I... love... you... You feel a soft and warm hand gently pat your cheek a few times. Galileo. Galileo, it's time to wake up now. The voice is quiet and soothing. However, it is laced with a little urgency. Your eyelids flutter open and meet with gentle grayish blue orbs. His gaze lingers on yours in silence for a few seconds. You feel the mattress of your bed dip slightly as the boy sits on the left edge of the bed, close to where you lie. He leans in, and a sweet aroma of tea wafts into your nostrils. Auriga, Cancer, and Orion. You begin studying his freckles, envisioning them as constellations in the night sky you love so much. Unfortunately, your fuzzy observations are interrupted as he pulls back. You're finally awake. I've been calling you for a while now, Galileo. A small sigh escapes his lips. Not of annoyance, but more of relief as the weight on your bed disappears. You hear the shuffling of footsteps and the clinking of teacups. You languidly stretch your arms and a yawn unfurling from your lips. I love this, like, really highly detailed. It reminds me a lot of, like, shoujo manga, the eyes. Um, it's really good. I really like the art. It's really good. Hmm. Good morning, At- Oh, no, I don't- No, this is me. Hmm. Good morning, Atlas. He melts into the bed. And, you know, I'm- you know, an unbiased, I like the fit, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Hmm, unbiased? Wonder why he likes the fit, chat. <laughs> he melts into the bed, enjoying how the silky sheets feel beneath you. Good morning, Galileo. 
It appears you have had a pleasant rest from how deeply you were asleep. You hum in agreement. The bed is like a cocoon, soft and warm. The calming smell of tea also embraces you, lulling you back into slumber. Did you rest well too, Atlas? No, no, no. It's hard to know when I'm talking. Did you rest Did you rest well too, Atlas? Yes, I did. Oh, why are you still in bed, Galileo? Go wash up now. The tea will grow cold. <laughs> Erwin High School Host Club? Yes, I'm a host. How did you know? We have arithmetics in the morning, you know. You know how Mrs. Dana abhors lateness. You try your best to hide your grin. It is only the early morning hours, but your dorm mate is already fussing. Yes, mother. You reluctantly depart from the coziness of your bed, grabbing your uniform and making a beeline to the bathroom. I don't know if the backgrounds are drawn by them, but at least the character art, I assume, is by them, and it's really, really good. You smile as you catch Atlas shaking his head lightly in your periphery. Oh my god! Oh my... Like, this is good, right? Like... I don't know. I don't know. It's, um... It's like all this pixelated stuff, so I don't know what's exactly... I don't know if that's their art style, if maybe they're using, um... Like, uh, painted over a real-life photo kind of thing. But it's really good. Like, every time I see the actual character, it's really good at the very least. After quickly changing into your uniform and washing up, you open the door, refreshed, and join, a and join Atlas at the tea table. Take a sip of the warm tea in front of you and smile. Atlas made it just how you like it. Peppermint, chamomile, green tea, and black tea. Um, I like... I like chamomile. 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 How do you guys pronounce it? I always said chamomile, but I've heard people say chamomile. Chamomile. I I'm pretty sure it's not chamomile, though. <laughs> I like, uh, I like a good chamomile. You know what? In the morning? Yeah. Let's do the chamomile. With... With no sugar. I can use sugar, but I don't... Not in the morning. No sugar. Now, I don't even know how to say it. I only heard it the way you said. <laughs> Why not camo kilometer? Yeah, true. Based. The Canadian way. Americans have no idea. No sugar. Milk, yes. Gotta be able to drink that shit. And milk. It's delicious, Atlas. Thank you. You don't need to thank me every morning. I'm happy to make tea for us both. Despite his words, his lips curved upwards. <laughs> I still think it's important to tell you that I appreciate everything you do for me, Atlas. You wrap both hands around your cup of warm tea as you admire the scenery outside the window. Oh, he's blushing. Did not notice the blush creeping up Atlas's cheeks. The early morning light is perf is bright. There's condensation on the window, so the garden outside is akin to oil paint on a canvas. Loose and carefree. Atlas was just scaring you. You two were never going to be late for class. <laughs> what a dick! <laughs> he literally woke me up to drink tea. <laughs> Based. Ah, oh, yes. Cup of tea. You and Atlas wake up very early in the morning to share a cup of tea and chatter together before a full day of schoolwork. The whole world is quiet, other than the occasional clinking of the teacup on the table opposite you every time Atlas set his teacup down. <laughs> My yeehaw girl show what? <laughs> Right now, you two are the only ones existing in this quaint little world. What do you chat about with Atlas? What I would give to wake up in the morning peacefully and have a nice cup of tea. Look out at a nice garden. Man, that sounds beautiful. That sounds amazing. Books? Schoolwork? <laughs> Gossip. Oh my god. Um. Uh, books? Books for me, I guess, but, uh. Schoolwork? Wait, chamomile? I'm actually having a crisis. I Google it. I've been saying it wrong my entire life. I said it chamomile. 
chamomile. I say mill. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Is it chamomile or is it chamomile? <laughs> gossip. A little gossip. It'll be more juicy this way. Have you heard about the recent drama between Theodore and Lucas? Your eyes glimmer mischievously. The affairs of others are often akin to a good book. It's like Mile. Chamomile? Oh, nice. Cool. Your eyes glimmer... Okay. Oh. Atlas stiffens, and for a second you can feel coldness from your best friend. I guess he doesn't like idle gossiping. Don't worry, bro. If this was IRL, I would have talked about a book instead. But that dissipates, bleeding like a gust of wind. Atlas is a nice person and avoids initiating conversations about the business of others. No, I haven't. Atlas shakes his head slowly, his tone flat and filled with boredom. It's not as bad as you think, and I promise it's quite funny. <laughs> Can't even keep up with gossip, what a loser. Atlas responds with a weak smile, urging you to continue. Oh, that's really good, I like that. Apparently, Lucas and Theodore plan to dance in the middle of a quiz during Potionology to distract Mr. Yearwood, you know. And waste time because they didn't memorize any of the brewing ingredients. You giggle, covering your mouth with your hand as the image of Theodore acting wildly dances in your mind. Theodore started dancing, but Lucas chickened out at the last minute, so Theodore got into massive trouble for distracting the class. So that was why Mr. Yearwood was upset and mentioned something about writing a new quiz for one of the other classes. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's kind of sad Lucas bailed out without telling Theodore. Yeah. Yeah, what the hell, homie? You don't leave your homie stranded like that. What? The first message you say is, I feel forkus inside of... Nah. Nah, okay. Alright, you can, uh... No normal being? Got a nah, okay. We're gonna put you in baby jail for now. <laughs> what the... Nah. <laughs> Not even a hello. Bro, not even a hello before that. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I think they're still fighting over it. Atlas let out a tired sigh. That is their friendship. We can't comment much on that. Yes, I can. He's a bad friend. Stick up for your homies. However, betraying your friend like that is absolutely cowardly and deserving of condemnation. Okay. Bro, what... <laughs> We can't comment on their friendship, but he's a piece of scum bullshit. <laughs> if I had to say something. Well, I know you would never bail on me if I wanted to dance in the middle of class. <laughs> Atlas chokes slightly on his tea. Of course I will accompany you in anything you wish, but I'd rather you not have any strange ideas. Okay, what do we want to chat about? Let's do books. I want to know what you're reading, bro. You reading romance? History? Fiction? I saw you very invested in a book when we were at the library yesterday. Did you finish reading it? Oh, yes I did. Atlas smiles happily at the mention of books. What is it about? A wanderer who loved exploring, but fell in love with a librarian, cursed to never leave her library. That sounds amazing. Atlas sighed, a little dreamy-eyed. He'd always loved romantic stories. Based. A wanderer who was always moving and a librarian who was always in the same place. That's an interesting relationship dynamic. But no matter how far the wanderer would go, he would always return to her. No matter what sights he sees, who he meets, he always returns back to the library and shares his tales of adventure with her. This is going to come out of left field, but, like, kind of reminds me of Usopp from One Piece and his, uh, his girlfriend, Kaya. <laughs> what devotion. You nod, impressed as Atlas joins in enthusiastically. Maybe the librarian can, can write all the Wanderer's adventures in a book, 
and put it in li and put it in her library. That way, he can always be by her side, even though they are apart. How did you guess? How did you guess that part of the story, Galileo? Atlas laughs, clapping his hands in delight. Well, I guess I don't need to read that book. Let's talk about schoolwork, okay? Thank goodness we finished our project early last week. That means we have more time to read in the library today. Let's not get too excited. Mr. Mrs. Dana gives a lot of arithmetic homework. True. Whole chapters at a time, too. And we have a potionology quiz in a few days. Both of you pounce slightly, hands clasping together, hoping your precious library stay will not be swamped with homework and assignments. Speaking about potionology... Don't you also have to prepare for the potionology competition as our school's representative? Okay, I'm... Whatever the lore is for this world, that's pretty cool. Potionology, that should be a real class in high school. <laughs> I should just be able to make potions, guys. And don't tell me it's science. <laughs> you sure have your hands full, Atlas. Oh, I've already submitted. So soon? On second thought... I'm not surprised. <laughs> I genuinely believe even college professors cannot triumph you in this subject. Hogwarts? Okay. You flatter me, Galileo. I have much to learn. <laughs> I want to stir up some concoctions for real for- Yeah, let me at them. <laughs> Give me a cauldron. <laughs> dream you had. Yeah, let me tell them about that giant spiral. I had a dream about a girl professing her love to a star. Oh? Atlas sips his tea, intrigued. Like the little astrologist confessing her love to the nameless star. Now that you mention it, you're spot on, Watson. I don't know if you play Elden Ring, but if you go for the DLC, good luck, comrade. I will be playing the DLC. Maybe, maybe this coming weekend I'll finally download it and I'll, I'll stream it. I don't need your good luck, though. I'm just that good at the game. I don't need luck. Yeah, I'll probably beat it this weekend. I'll stream it, okay? Now that you mention it, you're spot on, Watson. Atlas grins back, pleased with himself. Did you also see the moon, then? You pause to think about Atlas's question. I don't remember. I didn't have a good look. I'm sorry, Atlas. I didn't have a good look. I was distracted by their love confession. It was so ethereal. All my attention was focused only on them. Atlas's lips tremble, and he looks crestfallen at your words. It's so good. I'm, sh I'm sure you will have a dream about the little astrologist and her nameless star one of these nights, Atlas. You can go see the moon, and comfort them in their darkest hours. I know you've always wished for the happiness of your favorite characters, Atlas. Before Atlas can reply, you hear a sharp knock at the door before it disappears. That is the signal for the dorms to wake up and begin preparing for breakfast at the dining hall. For early birds like you and Atlas, that is the signal to finish your tea time and review your notes from yesterday before the first lesson. Wow, aren't we upstanding sit- What the hell? Dude, I didn't- I didn't ever review. <laughs> Atlas gazes at you, suddenly serious and determined. Let's review with arithmetics first. You groan a little, but immediately pull out your textbook. <laughs> the parameterization of rational points on conic- on a conic begins with considering the variable. That's a dream library. Thankfully, after a full day of classes, you were not left with a le you were not left with a lot of homework to finish in the evening. Even Mrs. Dana exercised some restraint on this particular day and stopped herself from giving the class a whole extra chapter of questions. As always, you and Atlas choose a table farthest away from all the fireplaces, fireplaces in the library. As Atlas settles down opposite you, he looks at you teasingly, his chin resting on his hand. You always complain about arithmetics class, but your results tell a completely different story, Galileo. 
Wait. We're gonna tease him back. We're gonna tease him back. Sir Atlas triumphantly returned from his arithmetic test, crusade and complete victory, whilst the humblest Galileo was beset by two errors in his endeavors. You put your hand to your chest as if you are a wounded knight. The, the first wound is from Zariski Topology. You fall back into your chair. Ugh. Second wound from Quadratic Forms. Oh no. Ugh. Sir Atlas, the future of finite fields and projective variety varieties is up to you. You go limp. No! Ah! Worst thing! Atlas giggles at your display of silliness. I know you work very hard in your studies, regardless of your personal feelings or external influences. Please don't feel disappointed, Galileo. You still received one of the highest scores in our class, no? An accelerated arithmetics class, no less. If that is not capable, I don't know what is. Brother, I am not Galileo. I'll tell you that much, chat. I was not good at math. I was okay at math, and then I did not take further lessons in math. <laughs> oh, Atlas. Let me have some fun. However, I do appreciate the heartfelt encouragement from our school's ducks. Ducks or do? No, it's ducks. <laughs> I love ducks. <laughs> you wave your hand, embarrassed, and pick up your pen. First one who finishes this arithmetics worksheet gets, uh, the glory of being the winner. I, a oh, one, two, three, go. You start doing the equations as you are counting down. Atlas chuckles while slowly picking up his pen. Galileo, where is your shame? Somewhere in the finite fields. How? Why? You watch helplessly as Atlas puts down his pen. You then stare blankly at your half-finished worksheet. Galileo, this isn't a competition. You needn't feel so disheartened. Just once. I want to win against you just once. Damn. But I'm happy you never go easy on me, Atlas. You take our contest seriously. Of course. I have respect for my opponent. Since I have won, can I please have a reward? You have the glory of being the winner. Is that not satisfying enough? Other than being a satisfied winner, you sign defeat, putting your hands up to surrender. What does my dear Atlas wish to have from this pitiful loser? Take off your blazer vest. Excuse me! Excuse- Hey, yo, what? What do you want me to do? You want me to strip? We're in a public library, homie. You see me naked every day. We're roomies. <laughs> uh, duh. Atlas, I didn't know you were so frivolous until today. Oh, don't let your mind wander so ridiculously. Your chest pocket has some loose seams. Let me help you sew it back on. Wait a second. Excuse me? You just you just want to help me? Take off your blazer vest. I don't know. Give me yours then. No, no, no. I'll take I'll give it to him. Let's be let's be sweet and cozy. We'll replay the game after, okay? Whatever the winner says goes. Yeah, sure, buddy. All you wanted to do was fix my coat, huh? You obediently take off your blazer vest and dutifully hand it to Atlas. Atlas takes your blazer vest and brings out the mini sewing kit he had in his pocket. Oh my god, bro sews? He's literally my housewife. Getting freaky in the library. We're gonna be kissing behind the bookshelves soon enough, chat. You watch your best friend gently smooth out the fabric and start fixing your pocket. Thank you for doing this for me, Atlas. Though, why can't we just hand it to the school seamstress? This is hardly a suitable reward for the winner. I don't want to waste your precious time with some loose seams on my clothes. I want to do this, Galileo. Haven't I told you before? 
My sewing skills will grow rusty if I don't find things to practice on. You sigh and nod at your friend's reasoning. The both of you work in silence for a while, until Atlas speaks up. Galileo, remember why Mrs. Dana did not set a lot of homework today? You finish scribbling in the last answer, and then place your pen down on the table to think. Mrs. Dana mentions something about a night market tonight? And how she's sure we are all too busy having fun to do the work, so she won't even try? Yes, it's a small night market held in the central capital to collect some funds for the large-scale market in half, of, in half a time's year, in half a year's time. A trial run, you would say. To see if there's interest in making this an annual event. Ugh, stretch check. I know it's not long in, but give me a stretch. <clears throat> Come on, Atlas. Atlas. Hey, Atlas. Shake one out for me. How about you take off your vest? <clears throat> Yo, Ghost, how's it going? Meowdy. The mayor wishes to bring more moments of joy for the citizens. That sounds so fun, although it's probably too late for us to go. Don't we need to inform the school early to prepare one of the school carriages for us? Oh, his eyes went, his eyebrows went down, he's getting sad. And we need to ask permission from administration to leave the academy. You scratch your head, the amount of permissions you need to request from the academy is overwhelming. There's just no time to receive all the permissions at this hour. I've already applied for us to leave campus tonight. The carriage is prepared too. You jump up in excitement. Oh, Atlas, you've had this all planned out since the beginning. <laughs> Let's go back to the dorms and pack up. We leave in two hours. Oh, we're gone. <laughs> The moment you step down from the carriage, you are hit with the delicious smell of sizzling sausages, baked bread, and candy. The streets in the capital are currently filled with warm lights and a cacophony of noise. Vendors selling their goods, young children running around with toys in their hands, and families enjoying the night. A hand gently wraps around yours, taking you out of your trance. It's crowded. We don't want to lose each other. Whoops. Uh, you give Atlas a tight... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Give Atlas a tight squeeze, bouncing up and down in excitement. Let's go, Galileo. It might be small, but there's still more to see than standing here. You allow Atlas to lead you into the sea of people. You gonna eat Frosted Flakes? Yo, you should buy the special cinnamon Frosted Flakes. Those are amazing. They also make, like, caramel Frosted Flakes. Those are, like, prime time midnight snack what should we do here okay um i'm gonna just say look around but then we'll we'll take a closer look at the stores after you two decide to walk around first and see everything the night market has to offer <laughs> you and atlas sniff new and strange perfume concoctions but <laughs> after two bottles every bottle suddenly starts smelling the same <laughs> Is this a new special side effect? You wheeze while Atlas laughs at you. Ugh. Admires the adorable knitted animals. <laughs> That's so cute, dude. What? <laughs> dude, that is the cutest thing. <laughs> Look, Galileo. It's a duck. Quack. <laughs> this is clearly a goose, Atlas. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> Galileo, for someone so good at math, you don't even know what a goose looks like. <laughs> what a quack. The two of you keep walking until Atlas suddenly stops. He turns his head in the direction directly opposite the line of stalls set up. You follow his gaze, and you see a small shop selling secondhand goods. More specifically, he is eyeing a print of painting print of a painting displayed behind the window. It is a nostalgic painting of a cozy cottage surrounded by flowers. 
bare of luxury material, but, be but bountiful in nature's gifts. Atlas stares in at the painting in silence for a long time, without blinking, his hands squeezing yours tighter than before. Do you like that painting, Atlas? You try to peek at the sign on the store's entrance, disappointed to see that it is already closed. No, I just thought that the colors were beautiful, that's all. Dot dot dot. Sorry for stalling. We can move on now. It is indeed a beautiful painting. Shame the capital no longer has this type of architecture anymore. I'm sure it exists outside the capital, somewhere in a quiet place. Just a cottage, the sky and nature, where we will live the rest of our rest of our days. We. Oui. <laughs> Instead of replying, Atlas pulls you along back into the lively no noise. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, Atlas. Atlas, you you can't just say something like that. You can't just tell me I'm gonna live with you forever, and then walk away. Nah, bro, really just did that. After sharing some hot pretzels and browsing some more. The two of you make your way back to the academy. I'm not gonna lie, bro's got riz. You feel so tired, you don't have the energy to stargaze tonight. After washing up and changing, you doze off the moment your head hits the wind hits the pillow. <sighs> Galileo, Galileo, are you asleep now? The same soft and warm hand gently pats your cheek. Slower, and more deliberate this time round. Upon confirming you are asleep, the boy steps away and walks to the tea table. He places both hands on the edge of the table, his face blank, staring out of the window. The, mu the moon is beautiful, isn't it? A full moon to end a wonderful night. You know, Galileo, I was so worried this morning. Atlas turns around to look at your sleeping figure. His shadow pools over your bed as if devouring you whole. I thought I infused too much sleeping potion in the tea leaves last night, and that was why you struggled to wake up this morning. Excuse me, why are you telling me you put a sleeping potion in my tea? Excuse me? What? Is that a prescription? I don't think that's a prescription. But I checked tonight and made sure the tea was infused perfectly. You did it again. There won't be any mishaps anymore. I will continue to wake you up every morning. And you will answer to my call with your cute sleepy expression. I will be the first face you see every morning. The last face you see at night. I want to be your universe. Please keep your eyes on me only, my astrologist. Atlas walks to the edge of your bed again, this time sitting beside you. He tenderly brushes his knuckles against your cheek. So, romantic or horrifying? I don't know about that one, hmm, you know? I mean, he's doing me a solid, it's not like he's not my best friend. The painting we saw today is the future I envisioned for us. We would live together in a cozy cottage away from everyone else. In the morning, we'd drink tea and chat about the frivolous mundane. In the afternoon, we'd read together in a garden surrounded by flowers. And at night, we'd admire the stars together. Atlas lies down beside you, his arms around your sleeping figure, and his cheeks pressing against your shoulder. Oh, you just wanted to sleep with me? Bro homie, you could have just asked. I'll do anything and everything to make that into a reality, Galileo. I hate it here in the capital. The noblesse oblige. The suffocating expectations. A life which never slows down. Most of all... I don't want to be the family heir. Ugly hypocrites. All of them. I don't want anything in this world other than you. Let's run away together. Somewhere far away. From then on, it will just be Atlas and Galileo for eternity. 
Atlas rubs his cheeks against your shoulder. You were so sweet today, Galileo. You gave the blazer vest to me immediately. I'm so happy you trust me so much. I never knew learning how to sew back then would have such wonderful perks. Starting from the top of your forehead, Atlas runs his index finger down along the middle of your face, tracing your nose and finally stopping at your lips. <laughs> He's just a sweet, weird guy. <laughs> Atlas stares longingly at your lips. Hey? Hey? Yet he sighs and stands up again. Oh, okay, good. Good night, my astrologist. Unfortunately, I still have some pest control duties tonight. But I will have a surprise for you in the morning. Hmm. I wonder what face you will make when you receive it. As usual, in the morning, you wake up to Atlas's gentle voice. You did not dream today. You quickly join Atlas at the tea table. However, this morning feels different. Instead of Atlas's usual gentle smile, a frown is adorned on his face. Galileo, I need to tell you something important. What is it, Atlas? You straighten up and look at your dorm mate with your full attention, your tea abandoned on the table. Atlas chews on his bottom lip. According to the staff, sometime after we arrived back from the night market, Theodore pushed Lucas down the balcony on the highest floor. What? Lucas is in the hospital with a coma, and Theodore has been taken out of school. L Lucas might n never w wake up. You feel a cold chill run down your spine. How? Why? Are they not best friends? Excuse me, what was the business you had to do last night? Excuse me? What? Did you murder someone because they caused drama? Atlas looks, <laughs> Atlas looks miserable, contemplating how to respond. I don't like reinforcing the spread of rumors. But apparently, according to what you told me yesterday, Theodore may have harbored resentment towards Lucas. Nah. No way. And it might have reached a breaking point. Th they had a massive argument prior to the incident. So when we were all asleep, Theodore, he... Your best friend covers his face with his hands, refusing to continue. You're shaking like a leaf at the news. Yet seeing how Atlas is trembling, you stand up and wrap your arms around him. Thank you, Atlas. You don't need to say anything more. I'm sorry you had to tell me such terrible news. Atlas hugs back, holding you tightly. It's so horrible, Galileo. I'm sorry. If only I hadn't told you anything about Theodore and Lucas's relationship, maybe you wouldn't feel so burdened right now. I promise, I won't talk about other people to you anymore. You feel Atlas nod his head. Wait a second, did he murder them? Just so I wouldn't be interested in them? Did he murder someone I was just... Yeah, I don't know if I... Uh, that's, I don't know if that's good. You feel Atlas nod his head. <laughs> End of demo. Oh my god, dude. Oh my... He actually did that. <laughs> this is fine. This is like the perfect mix of like creepy and... <laughs> Thank you for playing. Wow. I don't know. I guess I'll... I don't know how I'm going to do this. My t my thumbnail. I'm definitely uploading this. I'm going to upload this tomorrow. God, this, this was really such a pretty game. Such a pretty guy. I forgive him. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, he didn't really hurt us. I don't know if Theodore and uh, <laughs> I don't. They're gonna forgive him. So pretty can do no wrong. Uh, I don't know. Everything is okay, guys. <laughs> You're a little crazy, everybody. Let's uh, let's load up. Let's see some of those other options, and then I'll uh, 
and then I'll come back to that, okay? Uh, let's start with the descend the stairs. What's my dream that way? You feel drawn towards the sea of the dark abyss and begin descending down. The deeper you traverse, the more you are able to, to parse out a muffled voice. Why? How could my radiance pale in comparison to that nameless star? Why did you choose them but not me? Answer me, little astrologist. I love you. I adore you. I was always by your side. So, then, after all I have done, why won't you look my way? I am willing to dedicate all the brilliance of the night to you. What can that star possibly do to make you happier than you are with me? I can't live without your affection. A pitiful whimper echoes across the darkness, followed by an almost inaudible sobbing as if breathless. Not first. <laughs> Damn, dude. Now we're looking at the person who lost. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's nothing worse. There's probably nothing... I can't imagine anything worse than being in love with someone and they love someone else. Oh, my God. Oh, my, my heart. You want closer to comfort or to take a glimpse upon the source of this voice. Yet the voice of grief stops abruptly. It turns almost twisted. If can't have you, then I will. You feel a soft and warm hand gently pat your cheek a few times. Me with my barons. <laughs> what? <laughs> Galileo, Galileo, it's time for you to wake up now. Okay, so back to the beginning of the game. So I'm going to skip ahead. Let's have black tea this time with uh, one cube of sugar and no milk. Yep. And we're going to skip ad. Okay, books. Skip. Schoolwork. Skip. Gossip. Skip. Dream you had. I had a dream about someone heartbroken over their love falling for another. Atlas stays quiet for a moment, his eyes suddenly soft and filled with empathy. Unrequited love is indeed so. It's just like the moon watching their beloved astrologist fall in love with the nameless star. <laughs> Day they love my siblings as well. <laughs> May every heart be reciprocated, every lover be reunited, every love have an enchanting end. True enough. Quoting the witch's regret now, are we? Says the one who mentioned the little astrologist and her nameless star first. Before Atlas can reply, okay. We're gonna skip ahead. This time we'll whine. We'll be a little bitch boy whine instead of tease back. But I still got two questions wrong, Atlas. I studied so hard and still didn't receive full marks. Arithmetic has relentlessly bullied me ever since it has come into my life. Yo, another gifted sub. Thank you, Anuxius. Much appreciation. Atlas, you must seek justice for me. Because this scholarship of mine clearly does not care whether or not Arithmetix is holding me in a chokehold. I really don't have a choice but to bow down to finite fields and projective varieties. You pretend to wipe an invisible tear. Atlas giggles at your display of silliness. Okay. I know you work very hard in your studies. Okay. Let's skip ahead. Big? Okay, so this time I want to save here. Let's save here. Um, this, last time we gave him our blazer vest. Uh, give me yours then. Yeah, give me yours. No, 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 I'm fine with the way it is, actually. Let's go complete opposite. Visual novel? Yes, it is a Yandere visual novel. We've actually already beat the game. We're just checking the other options now. <laughs> so if you missed it, I'm sorry, guys. I'm fine with the way it is. Catch the video on YouTube. I'd rather not, Atlas. I'm fine with the way it is. But the seams will only come more loose, Galileo. Might as well nip it in the bud early. Sorry, Atlas. I just don't want to take my blazer vest off right now. Can you ask me for something else? Atlas shakes his head gently, knowing arguing, arguing with you is pointless. That's alright then, Galileo. Let me know when you need it fixed. Oh, I totally pissed him off there. When he drugs me to sleep tonight, chat, he is not going to be happy. Okay, skip. 
Uh, take a closer look at the stores this time. A stall selling Prince of Constellations and a small model telescopes immediately distracts you. That is so cool, actually. I'm not much of a, like, a sci- Okay, like, a little bit of a story time. I'm not much of, like, a sci-fi guy, like, at all. I don't really- I don't really like sci-fi, but I actually really like, like, astrology. I think it's really, like, like in lore and stuff, obviously. I don't actually- I'm not really one to believe in, like, real, real, like, stuff. Commit Sepak- Okay. On my way. <laughs> no, but I really like- I really like, like, constellations and, like, kind of, like, looking up at the stars. I really think that sort of thing is, like, really beautiful. But it's not real. What do you mean? What do you mean? The stars are real, you know? The constellations are there. We named them. We shaped them. You know, we, we look at them. We, we made the shapes for them and stuff. That's all real. You know, I don't really care if, you know, the stars aligned and next Tuesday my PB&J sandwich is going to taste bad, you know? Or, like, the stars aligned and on Friday night I might find the one I love. That stuff doesn't really interest me. I just think, like, stargazing and stuff is, like, really cool. Um, one, of my, one of the coolest things you can do in Canada is you can go see the Aurora Borealis. That's really cool. Astronomy... Ah, but that's the actual science behind it, see? So. I'm just in the middle. Not the PB&J! No! <laughs> Prediction. If you're a Libra this month, your PB&J will taste like poo-poo instead of peanut butter. <laughs> Not to make fun of people who love that stuff, you know? You can believe what you want. You can... I mean... A lot of that stuff is really vague for a reason, so... I'm not I'm not making fun of anyone. I don't care about that. I don't really care. You do you, right? Um, I'm just more of the type of person, I guess you could say, that's like, I, I dictate my own fate kind of thing, like, you know, that sort of, that sort of thing. That's like my belief, I guess. Sensing your eagerness, Atlas leads you to where the stall is. You eye the goods with excitement, although you already own very similar items. It is still fun to look at. Okay, but like star charts are like really cool too. Like, bro, this is like one of the coolest things you can own. You know, I've seen like people with globes like of like the world, but I also saw someone who just had a star chart and I thought that was way cooler. <laughs> An enthusiast of stars, kid. The vendor looks at you amused by your obvious interest. Yes, I presume you're also an enthusiast, sir. The vendor gives you a toothy grin. You're watching my stream and Ruby Whiska? Ruby Whiska's streaming? That's cool. I'm glad I raided her that one time. Yep, I loved them ever since I was a kid. The nights have been extra clear recently, so I've been stargazing every night. Likewise, you can see Capella very clearly as of late. I assume you will be keeping an eye out for the shooting star that's descending in a few months. Shooting star? You perk up, eager to hear more from the vendor. It's very recent news. There'll be a shooting star one of these nights later in the year. Oh, of course. I will be watching it then. Atlas! You turn to your side, only to realize your best friend had disappeared. Before you could panic, the vendor points to a stall a few meters ahead. Your friend slipped out to that jewelry stall over there, kid. Hurry along now. You don't want to lose him in this crowd. You thank and bid goodbye to the vendor before catching up with Atlas, who has just finished purchasing something. Ah, Galileo. Sorry for leaving so suddenly. I wanted to browse the jewelry stall, but seeing you in conversation, I didn't want to interrupt you. You're saying that your PB and J sandwich tastes that way because you did it yourself? No, 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 no. They're at a, they're at a school board. Like there's a cafeteria, I'm sure. So the lunch lady pooped in your sandwich if you're a Libra. <laughs> oh no! I just hear Ginger in the background. Excuse me. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! She's a Libra. No, 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 that's not the astrology. That's not the real astrology, okay? 
Of course, don't worry about it, Atlas. What did you buy? I've never seen you wear jewelry before. Oh, did I? I'm glad we came back for this. Just, I'm glad we replayed it just for this image alone. That's so cute. I love it. <laughs> it's not for me. I bought a ne I bought a necklace for my mother. Atlas pulls out a small jewelry bo jewelry box to show you. However, it was sealed perfectly with a ribbon. It would be a shame to unravel it so soon. The receiver should be the one to reveal the delight. I'm sure it's beautiful. Your mother will love it. That's really wholesome and cute. Wow. Wow, Atlas, you seem like a really decent guy when you're not drugging me every night to sleep. Atlas smiles and takes his hand into yours again. Oh yeah, and I guess you when you murdered that one guy. Yeah, that might be true too. After sharing some hot pretzels and browsing some more... <gasps> okay, chat. Fresh hot pretzel with with the cheese dip covered in salt. Ugh. Ugh. That's like one of the one of the top 10 snacks. After sharing some hot pretzels and browsing some more, the two of you make your way back to the academy. You feel so tired, you don't have the energy to stargaze tonight. After washing up and changing, you doze off the moment your head hits the pillow. Okay, we're going to skip ahead, because he's just going to drug us. Atlas takes out the box he bought at the night market. He carelessly pulls the perfectly tied ribbon apart, and gingerly takes out the contents from the box. Why would you do that, bro? Cheese with it sounds gross? Wait, you've never had a pretzel with the cheese dip? Wait, the cheese dip. It's like a like a queso. It's so fucking good. Pete, you can get the cheesy mustard too. That one's really good too. Yeah. Well, you can get mustard, yeah, but it's good. Like a queso? Hell yes. I dip my pretzel in queso. <laughs> Jalapeno cheese dip. Yeah, I would spread legs for that pretzel combo. You're so real. <laughs> what am I saying? What is chat saying? Okay, cheesy dip is fire. No, I have it solo. I mean, solo is fine. I like just the salty pretzel, you know? But, you know. I put cream cheese on my soft pretzels. That sounds really good, too. Both of the above sound really good. Unhealthy as hell, but good. <laughs> Carelessly pulls the... <laughs> pulls the perfectly tied ribbon apart and gingerly takes out the contents in the box. By the way, chat, this is why, you know, this is why people say cooking really is the way into someone's heart, okay? And in this particular situation, cooking is the way into their pants. <laughs> the box is then thrown haphazardly onto the floor, along with the ribbon. So why would you do that, Atlas? Walking up to you quietly, he slides one matching ring on the fourth finger of his left hand and carefully slips one on yours. Excuse me? Did you just... The fourth finger, huh? That's, uh, on the left hand, huh? That's, uh, a little bit of a quinky dink. Atlas then lies down beside you and holds up your hand, admiring it. The silver jewelry sparkles like a star under the moonlight. It fits so well, Galileo. I will find an engraver so our initials can be on it too. He hovers his left hand across your face so the cool metal band is touching your lips. He then withdraws his hand and leans in to kiss it himself. Oh, and then now he's wearing the ring. Oh my god. Bro's living in a fantasy. He just married me without my consent. <laughs> Even if we had a fun day today, I'm so sad I couldn't sew your clothes. I wonder why you refused me. I thought you'd already opened your heart to me. Starting from the top of your forehead, Atlas runs his index finger along the middle of your face, tracing your nose and finally stopping at your lips. Atlas stares longingly at your lips. Yet he sighs and stands up again. Good night, my astrologist. Unfortunately, I still have some pest control duties tonight. 
But I will have a surprise for you in the morning. Mmm. I wonder what face you will make when you receive it. Okay, off you go to murder some random kid. <laughs> hey man, don't worry about it. Malt pretzel every day? Horrible. Malt pretzel once in a while? That's fine, man. That's fine. Did not dream today. Okay, let's skip ahead. As you're washing up, you notice an imprint of a band on your fourth finger on your left hand. Sus. You shrug it off as skin imprints from sleep. What? Yeah, I just ra- oh yeah, a string just wrapped around your finger while you slept. It just kind of constricted it, I guess, a little. Quickly join Atlas at the tea table. However, this morning feels different. Instead of Atlas's usual gentle smile, a frown is adorned on his face. Galileo, I need to tell you something important. What is it, Atlas? You straighten up and look at your doormate with your full attention, your tea abandoned on the table. Atlas chews on his bottom lip. Why can't I skip this? According to the staff, sometime after we arrived back from the night market, Theodore pushed Lucas down the balcony on the highest floor. Lucas is in the hospital with a coma, and Theodore has been taken out of the school. L Lucas might never wake up. He kind of freaky, but I fuck with I mean, the, the femboy? The smart, nerdy femboy? Feel a cold chill run down your spine. How? Why? Are they not best friends? Atlas looks miserable, contemplating how to respond. I don't like reinforcing the spread of rumors, but apparently according to what you told me yesterday, Theodore may have harbored resentment towards Lucas. Bro danced in a classroom? And betrayed his- and didn't dance with his bestie? And you're telling me he murdered him over that? Okay, true. True, me too, honestly. And it might have reached a breaking point. They had a massive argument prior to the incident. So when we were all asleep, Theodore, he... Your best friend covers his face with his hands, refusing to continue. Shaking like a leaf at the news. Yet seeing how Atlas is trembling, you stand up and wrap your arms around him. Thank you, Atlas. You don't need to say anything more. I'm sorry you had to tell me such terrible news. Atlas hugs back, holding you tightly. It's so horrible, Galileo. I'm sorry. If only I hadn't told you anything about Theodore and Lucas' relationship. Maybe you wouldn't feel so burdened right now. I promise I won't talk about other people to you anymore. Feel Atlas nod his head. End of demo. That is such a creepy, like, picture, but it's so well made, like, I like it a lot. Just the creepy smile, dude. The eyes. Whew, it's so good. Thank you for playing. The eyes are still cute, yeah? The blush. These eyes are just amazing. This is, like, what drew me into the game that made me play it. Like, I was, I looked at the art and I was like, that is so fucking good. Like, I can't not play that. I like the story, too. I know it's not super heavy on the horror, obviously. Um, it does tell you. It's just Yandere, the Yandere, Yandere themes. Yandere. Yandere. <laughs> uh, Yandere themes. And, uh, but they still holds up on that by the end. And the, the demo's not too, too long, so I didn't get too bored. Uh, not, I didn't get bored. I just mean to say, I, I didn't think it was, like, too quiet in the middle. I think it's pretty good. Um, what's the only thing we didn't choose? Well, the only thing we didn't choose was like this. Give me yours then. But I'm cold without my blazer vest. Even though we're the farthest away from the fireplaces, the library feels very warm right now. I'm still cold. You sniff stubbornly, staring at Atlas's blazer vest. Atlas catches your gaze and chuckle upon realizing what you desire. He immediately takes off his blazer vest along with you, swapping them as if conducting a trade. There we go. Now we're both stripped. The cat was bad. <laughs> you put on Atlas's blazer vest. It's warm it's warm and smells pleasantly of black tea. Okay. Resume your arithmetic's homework while Atlas begins working on your blazer. You can wear my blazer vest whenever you wish, Galileo. Even when you're not cold. As long as you feel like wearing it, I'll give it to you. You look up from your work and see Atlas with his attention still focused on sewing. Count your days, Atlas. This will only last until I score a victory. Then I guess I will never let you win knowing this now. We'll see about that. Plus, you've never let me win once in the four years we've known each other. 
Atlas only smiles knowingly in reply. Okay. Okay. Galileo. Okay, wait, wait. Why can't I skip this? Why, why can't I skip this? Let me skip! Okay, preferences? Can I can I skip? Unseen text? Sure, yeah. I assume it's not working because he's wearing the vest. What did you do here? Take a closer look at the stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is all the same. Okay, we went. Turn. Skip. You were so cheeky today, Galileo. You had no idea how happy I was to see my blazer vest on you. You're so cute. I never knew learning how to sew back then would have such wonderful perks. Okay, and we're gonna skip. Okay, and it's the same. Okay. I just wanted to see that other option. That's all. That's all I wanted to do. Okay, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. That was Over the Moon. Uh, pretty good demo, honestly. Very pretty art. Very interesting. I like the thematic. I'm wondering what kind of world we're in. So, like, they're in, like, some kind of, like, private school, all boy old boys school you know um but they're like so there's like arithmetics obviously and there is there's like and we're super into astrology our character of course our name is galileo um but then we're doing potionomics i don't think that was a course you know i don't think potionomics was a course <laughs> maybe maybe in like the 1800s there was potionomics i don't know so that's a little interesting to me i like the i like the world building i guess you could say um, I'd, I'd love to see more of this game. The developer has really amazing art. And, uh, obviously I like the yan the Yandere themes. <laughs> I think my chat really tends to like the Yandere's. So, cute fanboy. Kills anyone you gossip about. Pretty interesting, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, with that, thank you so much for watching. This has been Clock. If you like this video, please leave a like. It helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you're new here. We play a lot of Yandere visual novels, a lot of indie horror games, and just random games in general. So, if you like this video, I'm sure you'll like the games in the future that I play. I'll see you next time, okay? Peace out.